Now, the Chorus Radio Network presents The Roy Green Show with Roy Green, keeping you informed and entertained. Now, here's Roy. We are closing in on uh, Election Day. One more week, and that's it. Well, one week and one day. But one more week without voting, and then on the 19th, we're at it. Although there are people voting this weekend, including today, Thanksgiving Day. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. There are people voting today. And from what we understand, the lineups have been fairly lengthy. We have some uh, specific questions for you and direct questions that I want to ask you. But I'm going to begin with this. I'm going to begin with the NACOB and national security. And for a reason. Mr. Mulcair and Mr. Trudeau seem to be suggesting, as do some others in the media, that it's time now to move on. But I would argue, and I did said this on Twitter earlier today at the Roy Green Show, that arguably Tom Mulcair and Justin Trudeau are significantly responsible for this debate going on at all. And it has not gone away as far as a point of interest is concerned from Canadians across the country. I'm certainly hearing from people on email and on Twitter and on Facebook. We're on Facebook, The Roy Green Show. My uh, webpage is roygreenshow.com. So standing by to join us is Dr. Zudi Jasser, the founder of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy, former United States Navy Lieutenant Commander, and the author of Battle for the Soul of Islam and American Muslims Patriots Fight for His Faith. Before we talk to Dr. Jasser, because I, I, I asked him by way of email this morning whether he's been following the Canadian election. Before we talk to Dr. Jasser about what we're talking about in this country and what's going on here, have a listen to what Stephen Harper said to me in the interview that we recorded with the Prime Minister on Thursday about the niqab and about national security. We'll be playing other clips from the Prime Minister as I ask you other questions as we go through the first two hours of today's show. But here's what the Prime Minister said. Here's my question and the answer on the niqab. Prime Minister, I do want to ask you about the niqab issue. It's resonating across this country, and wearing a niqab while swearing the oath of citizenship resonates with uh, 80% of Canadians who side with your government's position, and that's not something new. In 2010, 80% of Canadians outside Quebec and 95% of Quebecers supported the then-Quebec provincial government's plan to not provide public sector service to women wearing a burqa or niqab. You've spoken about reviewing Quebec's approach to the niqab and the public sector. Tie this together for us, Prime Minister. The wearing of the niqab while swearing the oath of citizenship and the progression potentially to the niqab impacting on the federal public sector service. Well, look, I think we've been very clear on this. Our, our position for some years has been when you join the Canadian family, um, you do so with your identity revealed. This simply is a reflection of our values of openness and equality. Um, you know, the new Quebec government, which is a liberal government, a federalist government, has had a very careful approach to this. Uh, they've tabled the law um, to deal with the issue of, of public services, uh, and we've said we will uh, take a look at that. But we are, you know, uh, look, I don't know why the other parties uh, continue to take positions on this that are so offside with Canada, but we will we will continue to look at this in a way that is rational and fair. All right, so there's the Prime Minister of the Niqab. Then I asked him about national security. National security, the threat of ISIS and terrorism, overseas and homegrown. Your government has chosen to participate in the U.S.-led coalition attacks on ISIS. Mr. Mulcair said he'll withdraw from the coalition immediately if he's elected. Now the Russians are in Syria, and you had personal words with Mr. Putin. How do you see the issue of national security, both internally and externally, playing itself out going forward in the short term? Well, look, I think Canadians understand that we are in a world that is increasingly dangerous. We've seen the rise of this global jihadist movement. Um, You know, we saw two Canadian soldiers uh, killed on our own soil last year. Uh, We're there uh, with all of our partners, uh, both uh, NATO partners and others, uh, taking the fight to ISIS because they want to use Iraq and Syria as a base to launch terrorist attacks against us. They've said so explicitly and demonstrated some capacity to do that. So we think this is in our vital national interest. Obviously, we're taking security measures here at home. 
Uh, we've we've uh, passed a law to bring our security measures and resources, uh, the powers of our police and security agencies, up to the standards of other Western nations, doing so in a way that protects our, our liberties. And we're going to continue to be vigilant uh, on this. You know, we are... Uh, we are a free and open society that, uh, unfortunately, like so many others in the world, is under attack, under attack from or potential attack from these extreme uh, jihadist terrorist groups, and we're determined to take the measures necessary to preserve our society and protect ourselves from these kinds of threats. Prime Minister Stephen Harper, as I spoke to him on Thursday morning, we played the entire interview for you yesterday, and we'll be playing different clips from the interview in the first two hours of today's show. Dr. Zudi Jasser is the founder of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy, former United States Navy Lieutenant Commander, and the author of Battle for the Soul of Islam, an American Muslim Patriot's Fight for His Faith. Zudi, how closely have you been following the Canadian election? And thank you for joining us. And uh, the debate that's going on in this country about the niqab, what do you want to add to it? What's important from your perspective that we think about? Well, thank you for having me, Roy. And yes, I've been following it, especially when it comes to the issues of uh, Islamic issues, freedom of religion and foreign policy. I've been very close to it. You know, I'll tell you, this is it's amazing how an issue like the niqab of something practiced by a minuscule number of Muslims becomes such an emblematic issue. And the reason it's emblematic is it becomes a an oddly a wedge issue in politics, especially during elections, when in fact both sides of the political spectrum should be against this. One Uh, Obviously, for security issues, uh, set aside the religious freedom issues, people need to be recognizable in public. And I'm not, we need to separate here niqab from burqa. Burqa is the body dressing, which I don't think the government should have any role in. But the facial covering, I mean, even in America, we've determined uh, back from the Supreme Court uh, many, many years ago that people don't have a right to wear face masks uh, during uh, uh, gatherings and demonstrations, etc., because of security issues. Then the other issue is the left. If they believe in women's rights and feminism and individuality, there's nothing more that's a symbol of the smothering of women's individuality than the niqab. So to say that that's a religious freedom, there are many things claimed to be based in religious freedom that are actually rejected in the West because we've given rights to women that are equal. We've given rights to minorities and others that trump religion's rights to suppress any other voices of diversity and modernity. Do you have as much of a debate, or would you, if it became part of the American election um, issues, or the, the lineup of issues, would you have as vigorous a debate about the niqab in the United States as, as is happening in this country? And by the way, let's not forget that 80% of Canadians nationally have declared to pollsters, and since 2010, that the niqab has no place in the kind of situation that we saw uh, the other day, and that is swearing the oath of allegiance to Canada. Or the citizenship. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm sure the numbers would be the same, if not uh, uh, more uh, significant, to refuse to allow the niqab to be worn. There was a case in Florida in which a woman uh, claimed that she had a right to wear it for her driver's license, and uh, uh, the state ultimately uh, has won that so far, but it's still being fought. Uh, you know, in our own elections, uh, uh, candidate Carson has been uh, uh, vocal about whether a Muslim could be president, and we've been expressing the fact that an Islamist should not be because of ideological issues, but a Muslim should be able to based on the First Amendment. So, yes, uh, we're all in the West struggling with uh, threading that needle between the Islamist ideological threat uh, and the uh, fact that Muslims can be patriotic, no different than our founding fathers were patriotic against theocracy. Zudi, what about the argument that's put forward by those who support the wearing of the niqab for the citizenship oath, and that includes the Federal Court of Canada, which overruled the federal government. We're going to talk about judges who are overruling governments a little later on the show. But one of the arguments is that it, by by arguing against the niqab being worn, that it creates a climate of intolerance and potential violence against Muslims. I, I reject that wholly. I think that if there's anything the government should be there for, it's to protect individual rights. And when in a community uh, then uh, uh, confuses uh, uh, the rights of religious freedom and then uh, creates a concept where in- individuals may actually ask for rights that obliterate their own rights, we see this in domestic violence, we see it in rape victims and others, in which all of a sudden they almost get a, 
a, a syndrome that prevents the standing up for their own rights. So the government needs to stand up for the values that protect individual rights. And I think by the court not trumping, allowing individual rights to trump the right to cover their face, let alone the security issues of people walking around faceless that can commit acts of terror uh, and other things that we should be able to recognize. I mean, we tell our youth, the reason God made every face different on the planet is we have a we have an obligation to represent who we are publicly, and that's what facial individuality is all about. It's not just a discussion in Canada. Uh, I pointed out yesterday and the day before that uh, in France there's been a law banning the niqab in any public place since 2010, and if you do wear a niqab, you face significant fines, and that was taken to court. That case was taken to court, predictably. And last year, the European Court of Human Rights supported the French no niqab um, law, and that cannot be appealed. That particular uh, judgment by the European Court of Human Rights it cannot be appealed. So this has been going on for, for quite some time, and the BBC pointed out that of the 5 million Muslims who are citizens of France, the majority support the no niqab law. And, and you know, it's interesting. The no niqab law should not be a religious freedom issue. It's a national security issue for people to be able to have be facially recognized. The, the refusal to wear it, uh, to be able to wear it during the oath of citizenship, is an ideological one that the state needs to protect. When you take an oath in America to protect our country against uh, enemies, foreign and domestic, this is an ideological battle. And thus, I think it's also important that the state stand by the the demand that we have of them to protect individual rights, and the niqab does not protect the individual rights of women and, in fact, obliterates it. What do you think the majority opinion of Muslims in the United States would be about this? I have no doubt that the majority of Muslims would reject the right to wear a niqab. I mean, we see this not only in America, but in Muslims throughout the Middle East. This is not a right that uh, women uh, especially are clamoring to have. In fact, they see it as a symbol of a misogynistic, paternalistic society that they came to the West escaping. Zudi, thank you for the time. I always appreciate it. Thanks very much. Anytime. Thanks, Roy. Dr. Zudi Jassir, the founder of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy.